so this feels quite embarrassing vlogging at the airport but basically I just had breakfast at prep and I had two things I had a bacon and egg muffin and also birch muesli so basically like the first hurdle and the first thoughts I have in my mind whenever I'm at the airport this early it's quite early it's, it's just gone 6 30 or going 6 30 you have these thoughts in your head that are like well you shouldn't be eating it's a bit too early if you you'd literally be asleep right now so you don't need to eat whatever um, and if you do have those voices and you're feeling hungry please just have food like it's okay you don't have to then those voices aren't right okay so that's the first hurdle that a lot of you might have when you go to the airport um, it's okay to eat like it's okay I just had two things not even just one two things and that's okay yeah maybe if I was at home right now I'd be asleep and I wouldn't be eating but I'm not at home I'm at the airport and I felt hungry after being awake for a while so it's okay listen to your body accept it having two things not just one obviously again it's just another thing in my head but it's, they're just thoughts they're all just irrational thoughts just go with what you feel like you want and that's okay it's okay to do that so yeah see you <laughs> Guys, this is all I want in life. So here I'm showing you that I was basically attacked by mosquitoes. Hi! I literally just woke up and it's almost one. No, it's, it's 12 something, basically. My voice sounds like it's going, even though I only really went out last night. I went out for the first time in terms of like club club in Albania for the first time since every time I've ever gone to Albania. I don't know what first time means. So yeah, went to the club for the first time last night and yeah, it was really fun to be fair. I'm quite glad we went because uh, I'm here alone and I'm visiting my auntie and uncle and my cousin who's staying with them as well. I used to have more family here, but now everyone's kind of like spread about. But anyway, really fun. I woke up this morning realizing that, well, to be fair, the last few days, I came here maybe this is my fourth or fifth day and I haven't done any exercise at all really. And my meals are not that it's bad, but every morning I've just had a sandwich with ham and cheese, like a toasted sandwich, and eggs, which is fine. It's not, but I'm not getting like a lot of variety. I'm not getting like loads of vegetables, loads of nutrients in. A lot of the meals are quite just loads of bread, <laughs> like breakfast, bread, lunch. If I want a snack, it'd probably be bread, just because when being in someone else's house, especially like fair enough, if I was alone and I could get my own like shopping, then maybe I'd have a bit more things here and there. But overall I've been really flexible and like I'm not I've not really been thinking about my food too much. I've been feeling quite satisfied with my meals most of the time. Um but yeah, the whole exercise thing I think is something that can be quite difficult for people to deal with, especially if there's not really much opportunity to exercise or there's like for example, in Albania it's been like thirty six degrees. It's been so hot and you could also think that you're just making excuses to not work out. Um, but I don't think it's an excuse. I think it's just a valid reason. Like sometimes when it's too hot and you're on holiday and you're abroad and you're doing other things during your day. Like I've been doing a lot of walking about, for example, which I know is not the same as doing exercise and a workout and using my muscles, but it's still some form of activity. Um, which is it's good enough and yeah I just wanted to say that if you are on holiday or you've taken a few days out this is my second holiday of this summer so that's why in my head it's like oh, well you haven't really been working out at all this last month and I just keep coming back to well I know that it's going to be okay because as soon as I go back home and stop my travels and start my masters for example that i'm gonna come back into some sort of routine and that's okay because right now my priorities are not 
working out and exercise and keeping fit and healthy. Obviously, keeping fit and healthy is always in the back of my mind, and I do think I'm doing that. I'm just doing that in other ways, in terms of my resistance training and workouts. Um, it's not at the forefront of my priorities whilst I'm traveling. My priorities when I'm traveling is have lots of fun, see as much as you can, really make sure that I'm spending as much time with my auntie and uncle and my cousin and like engaging in conversations, like deep conversations because I haven't seen them for four years. So, and because now my auntie and uncle both work at different schedules. So when my uncle does wake up eventually because he does night shifts, to spend the afternoon with him and to spend the day with him. And when my auntie gets back from like four to the evening that I'm spending time with her. So yeah, don't stress so much, especially like it's a bit, you're probably not in my situation where you've gone on holiday and then gone on holiday again. And then I'm gonna end up in Lisbon soon and going home on the 30th of August. Um, you're probably going on like a week's holiday and not exercising for a week is not a big deal at all. <laughs> And I exercise to make myself feel good. So although I'm having these like quite negative thoughts, like, oh, you should be exercising. I'm not, my change is now from like however many years ago, I would have come on this holiday and tried to have done like a 15 minute hit workout, no matter the weather, no matter how I was feeling. Um, and it just wasn't serving me any good. I was doing more harm than good. Um, and now, when I hear those thoughts, I don't start running to a to do a workout because I know it's not that urgent for me to do it. I know it's not the end of the world. And although, to be fair, I do crave movement, I crave working out, I, I, I know it's good for me and I do enjoy the feeling, um, but I can't stress out too much if it doesn't come. And again, it's not just an excuse. Sometimes you can be putting excuses on, but yeah. Anyway, so moral of the story is, please, <clears throat> please don't stress out if you haven't been able to exercise. You will always be able to return to exercise. Um, you're not gonna undo all your hard work. You're not gonna, out of nowhere, gain loads of weight either because that's an irrational thought that I had in my head and that's only a bad thing because of the things that I've associated weight gain with. Weight doesn't have to have so many connotations and so much meaning. Your body is not the most important thing. And yeah, just take it easy. Be, be patient with yourself, have compassion for yourself. Just don't, don't stress. Oh, I'm now sad. To be fair, I also wanted to say that Eating in, when you're abroad is quite a difficult thing in general because as I said, you, you don't have access to all the things that make you feel that you're eating well at home. For example, I would call these like safe foods, the food that you always eat and that you put in your diet and that you enjoy eating, that you know fills you up and that you feel like is healthy. Um, when I was struggling with my eating disorder, I would have loads of safe foods that I felt comfortable and I'd be, I could eat these foods kind of in abundance, not really in abundance, but I could eat them without thinking about, oh, what's this going to do to me? Or like, should I be eating this? Um, and again, it's because you don't really have access to those foods, especially if you're eating out. Something that I know I would have found so difficult is no matter where I go, every single coffee shop will give you a different cappuccino. One day I literally got a milkshake, <laughs> like lit with cream and caramel. Another day I got like, just black coffee with a little bit of milk. Another day I got the sweetest cappuccino you've ever seen in your whole entire life. So I was able to drink them all, but before I would have, say for example, the milkshake with cream on top, I would have taken like one sip and be like, no, because I don't know the calories, I don't know this, I didn't ask for this, this is not what I wanted. And the safe food was, okay, well I just wanted that cappuccino and I know what that cappuccino is. If anything different comes then I can't have it. And like, the same with other things like the meals that my auntie prepares. I can't change the way that, I can't go to her and be like, can you change the way that you cook your soup? Oh, I'm not gonna do that. And I'm in a place now where I don't feel that need to do that because I know that <clears throat> while I'm here, it's, it's quite difficult actually. So, although I know that she probably uses 
she probably cooks in a way that I wouldn't cook at home, it's still okay. You have to allow yourself to eat as much as you'd like. Because I think where the sort of, oh my God, I'm gonna eat it all, I'm gonna gain weight, having those thoughts makes you then more likely to overeat because you're coming always from this place of like restriction and that restrictive mindset and dietary restraint whether you're actually restricting or not having those thoughts actually makes it more likely for you to then overeat and turn into like turn to have these disordered eating habits around food and then when you do then overeat on a meal that someone else has cooked you for example then you're like aha look it's true my thoughts are true because i've just overeaten and it's like you're confirming to yourself that you can't trust yourself but that's not the case you're probably overeating in that moment one maybe your history maybe you haven't been eating enough anyway and you're in this cycle of under eat and overeat and then two this like dietary restraint in your head these thoughts making and leading to an overeating moment um it's not that oh the food of, maybe the food in front of you was really good as well um so yeah there's so many things that come into this that then affect how you eat in that moment and i guess what i just wanted to say there is that it can be very scary to try new foods or to let someone else cook for you and to eat in a way that's not how you usually eat because you're not used to it and you're scared as I said of all these things like weight gain and and the calories that you don't know of and the ingredients that they've used but your health and diet and weight is not dependent on the one meal that you have and if you allow yourself to enjoy a variety of foods you honor you respect when you're hungry and you're also able to stop when you're full Obviously, I'm not saying have all the junk food in the world and while I'm here, that's not what I'm doing. But I do have that flexibility when, okay, I've had, you're allowed to have bread in the morning and bread in, for dinner and not, yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But I hope that kind of the general gist of that is have a bit more flexibility and know that it's okay. Like... Again, same with the exercise, same with the food. It's okay, whatever happens is okay. Um, nothing is the end of the world. And although it might feel so scary in the moment and so daunting and like you're doing something wrong, you're not. Food is just food. Guys, look at this. Oh my God. So the last few places that I've been to gave given a little for coffee. They've given us a little like quote, so it's quite cute. We're getting tattoos. <laughs> really good. Mm. actually that hungry this morning and I don't have a voice still my goodness I don't know what's happening this is two eggs mozzarella ham and bread and I had a banana earlier and a coffee so I'm just making coffee for my uncle and this is how we do it basically it's just instant coffee and milk but it actually tastes really good <laughs> so there we go I wanted to actually say was that even though I wasn't that hungry, I still ate because food was kind of on my mind. So I was like, okay, sometimes when you when you find yourself thinking about food, it's actually because like you're kind of hungry. So even though I didn't feel that hungry, I just thought, well, if I'm thinking about food, I should probably just eat something and then I can not think about it again. And yeah, that for me was like typically would be quite a small meal. Like it wasn't anything that special. Um, and need to attend this coffee because it's gonna overflow. Maybe what I wanted to say was that even if you're not that hungry, but you're thinking about food quite a lot, then it's probably a good idea to just eat um, and don't feel like, oh, well, no, I have to be starving to eat something because that will just be a mistake. And I used to do this all the time, especially when I was on holiday. Um, I'd wait for such a long period of time before I would allow myself to have anything because I'd be like, well, I can wait longer. 
and it's kind of like saving calories for later but not really I just felt like well it hasn't even been that long since I last ate um, things like this so if you find yourself always extending the wait period before you have something because you feel like you you shouldn't really be eating first thing in the morning or I don't know you just feel like you can have this wait to, you can wait longer like oh no I don't need to eat right now I don't need to eat right now um, coffee is not a replacement for a meal by the way things like this like just know just know that it's okay to eat you don't need to wait long periods of time to eat um, and actually my advice would be to eat more regularly um, especially if you've gone a while not listening to your hunger cues you'll probably have to eat more regularly <laughs> this isn't even everything but already looks fab <laughs> So light and fluffy. Even though it doesn't look yum. <laughs> so basically, you can't get a direct flight from Tirana to Lisbon. So I'm in Milan currently, and my next flight is at 6 p.m. and it's currently not even, it's 8.30 a.m. in the morning. So I literally have many hours. So now I'm debating whether I get a bus into the city. I haven't planned this at all. I probably should have done and roam around. I don't know what to do. I'll, let, I'll update you guys. <laughs> So I just got an all day bus ticket for five euros and I'm gonna go into the Bergamo city. Can't pronounce it properly. I think that's what you say. Anyway, goodbye. So guys, I'm literally just walking about. I was walking in the right direction. There's this old town, old town square and it's basically just straight. It's like a 27 minute walk away, but it probably won't even be that long. Um, it feels weird. I'm in Milan and I'm just on my own walking about. I don't know what's going on. It feels fun though. Cute. <laughs> These guys are literally fishing. <laughs> Quite cute buildings. This is lush, guys. <laughs> I wanted to say about the Albanian trip and all my holidays so far this month. <laughs> I've no, I, first of all, I never go on this many holidays. Um, this is the most I've travelled in a year ever um but in albania like and in greece I, it's not that i was doing a lot it was more just getting back to the simpler things in life and not feeling like there was any rush and honestly i've just had the best time um and that doesn't take away from the fact that i've got so many things that i still want to do and achieve and things that I, like releasing all my podcast episodes that are still yet to be done but instead of feeling like i'm not doing enough i've just really appreciated the time that i've had with like family and my auntie and uncle and like really talking to them properly because i haven't seen them in years and things like that just slowing down and appreciating the simple things um so yeah <laughs> don't know where that came from but i thought i'd give you guys a little update as well because why not so far i've managed to walk down really quiet and peaceful alleyways so just been walking really how yum i got myself some watermelon i'm sweating i'm not hungry yet because i had a huge huge dinner last night um, but guys there was these pizzas that I walked past and they put like whole mozzarella balls on top of slices like whole mozzarella balls and like the top of them was just insane like absolutely insane um, I'm gonna try this watermelon I can't eat it at the same time as vlogging so I, I'll let you know how it compares to Albania afterwards <laughs> Isn't this insane? <laughs> oh my god.
So here we have a pistachio croissant and a cappuccino. At the airport, I saw them, they had like a filling croissant station where they have plain croissants and then like different syrups and you would put different creams on them. It's quite funny. a bit of a quick change because I was sweating and I'm gonna buy some Italian Prosecco for me and Maria when we're in Lisbon. <laughs> there is poke at the airport, poke bowls. What the hell? I'm sipping on fresh orange juice. It's all sweaty. I love how like what's it called duty free here is so much cooler than any airport I've actually been in. There's literally poke, I'm gonna get poke later. And I'm going to find somewhere to hopefully charge my stuff because I'm on 20%. I wanted to talk about how much I ate last night and how that made me feel today. I was wearing quite a small top which showed my chest and it was cropped and I was wearing small shorts as well. And I just wasn't feeling that comfortable after eating a lot. Like it's normal to feel bloated and I was feeling bloated and it's just something that I want to point out is the way that I would have responded to how much I ate last night, three years ago, would have been completely different to the way I responded now. Now it's just, I listened to my body. I didn't feel like I had to punish myself today. And it wasn't that, oh, I shouldn't eat anything. I allowed myself to have the pistachio croissant when I wanted it. Um, but naturally I just haven't been that hungry yet. Um, so yeah, it's, normal to feel bloated especially after a big meal haven't really gone to the toilet digestion is not really it so yeah beat yourself up for indulging in food um it's one night it's, if you're doing it if this seems to be a common theme and pattern in your life it's probably a result of restriction as i mentioned previously um obviously there's other factors into play as well i'm not saying that everyone should always indulge not what i'm saying and in fact, if, you, if you're constantly finding yourself overeating, there is probably something behind that and it's, it needs to be solved. But solving it with more restriction is not going to work. There's, it's just covering up, basically. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, now eating poke. But something I wanted to say before, but I wasn't getting around to it, was that feeling of like feeling discomfort in your body when you're bloating. And basically the whole time I was like, should I just buy something to change into? Because I don't like how I'm feeling. Like, it was like, I, w I didn't want the people around me to see this version of myself. Even though, like, it's just my body, it's just my bloated body. I didn't, I don't need to show my best version of me to these random people that I'm walking past in the street. Like, it's just weird how we kind of, kind of put other people's perceptions of our bodies in our minds all the time, especially when we're feeling uncomfortable with our bodies. So yeah, I think the whole time I was more just like, okay, it's okay, it doesn't matter. Like I have to be very compassionate with myself in these moments because there's literally nothing I could have done to change what I looked like and that bloating feeling that I had. And if anything, thinking about that bloating feeling is just going to make you feel even more uncomfortable. So know that this feeling of discomfort is only like temporary. It's not gonna last forever. finally boarding onto the plane i did a bit of stuff though i did i edited a video podcast sorry and spoke to my family which was really nice my sister got her gcse results back today so really cute anyway on the plane getting on the plane I had kiwi, and now I'm having Nutella and this like right, donut brioche thing. That's for later. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually now in Lisbon, and the last clip I would have showed is me eating this like tuna baguette and a packet of crisps at the airport. Um, 
And something I wanted to say about that was the first thing I saw was like this big ham cheesy baguette. And I thought, ooh, that looks nice. Editing Elsa is laughing, is cringing too hard at that. But then I also had this feeling that I really wanted like something a bit more fresh. And like I was just really craving like a freshness and not that the tuna baguette was that much more like healthier in any way like I'm not trying to say the tuna baguette was healthier than the ham and cheese baguette but in terms of the taste and what I was craving and what I really wanted to have and what would satisfy me it's something that had a bit more variety in it, it wasn't as um I don't know just ham and cheese very salty a bit heavier than lettuce tuna and egg and yeah, it, the tuna baguette would have just been a lot like fresher, I don't know, like taste-wise, but not in terms of healthier or what's better, right? So for me, I went for the tuna baguette. And again, this wasn't from a diet perspective or a restriction point of view, or that I felt like I had to go for what I thought would be lower in calories. This is just an example of listening to your body and listening to the kinds of things that you're craving and because I think people with intuitive eating believe that oh it's it's just allowing yourself to eat all the junk food and that's such a common misconception that we forget the really good aspects of intuitive eating that a lot of us can apply more to in our lives it's not just yeah, I can eat whatever the hell I want. So yeah, that's just something I wanted to mention and maybe I can speak more about intuitive eating. It's not that exactly I follow the principles in terms of proper intuitive eating because there is like a proper framework, but it is something I utilize more and more in my life, especially having moved away from like calorie counting and um, I never really like macro counted, but yeah, just going with what you feel like having and going for an option that is maybe like fresher or is a salad does not always mean that you're following diet rules and that diet voice um, sometimes it can just be what you want and again this isn't to say that one option is better than the other because there will be times where you do want the ham and cheese baguette or you do want the pizza or you do want the dessert and that's totally okay too it's being aware it's being neutral about foods and allowing yourself what it is that you want but also obviously treating yourself with respect in, and that looks like having vegetables and eating a variety of plant-based foods and moving your body and getting enough sleep and all these things um i think i might end the vlog there you might see a lisbon vlog you never know <laughs> but i hope this one was helpful i feel like i spoke a lot more and my Albanian vlog so yeah I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time <laughs> at all as <laughs> at the near as the time guys are literally fisting